Now I'm going to I'm going to start us on a series. You know, been looking at righteousness, and I'm I'll, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to take us in the direction tonight. And we're going to look at from the book of Psalm 92, verse uh, verse book of Psalm 92, verse 10 to 12. I want us to read it first. It gave us one of the benefits of righteousness. I want us to explore it more. He says that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree and grow like cedar in Lebanon. So we're going to delve into what does that flourishing means. Praise God. We're going to look at that. And we are going to look at it in a wider way. What other benefits? Not we are not going to be exhaustive on it. We may, we may be, God, if God allows us, we're going to other areas. But tonight, we want to look at what does it mean to flourish here on earth, and also the benefits of being living a righteous life, even as pertains to eternal life. Praise God. So let's look at it again. Psalm ninety-two. And we're going to read from verse 10. All right? And I read to 12. But my own shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see the desire of my enemies. And my, enemy, my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Say, Amen. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Praise God. So this evening, we are going to first look at the word flourish. Flourish. It's one of, it's one of the benefits. You are all, we are all put in this world. Abraham flourished. Isaac, because he has longer, he, let's recall a bit. Adam was flourishing as long as he was in the right stand, having the right standing with God. He was flourishing. Everything he was enjoying was at the expense of God. So he was flourishing until he, he fell, he, the boat fell into the, the satanic deceit. And God withdrew himself and withdrew his blessing. And therefore, rather than flourishing, they were languishing. You will not languish in Jesus' name. The opposite of flourish is to languish. It's to be empty. It's to come to, to a life of frustration. A life of failure. Praise God. But that's not the life God intends for his people. When you belong to God and you apply yourself to God and you are keeping in relationship with God, as being having a right standard with Him, you are bound to flourish because God will make Himself available to you and make everything He has available for you. Tonight, I believe as we hear this word, there's going to be a turnaround. You're going to have a second thought on the way you live your life, whether you are living in the fullness of God's presence with yourself, and when you have God's presence, then fullness of all that God has for you. As an inheritance, even here on earth. Praise God. Abraham, God called him, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, walk before me and be ye perfect, and I will make a covenant with you. I will make you, I will bless you, and I will bless you, and you will become a blessing, distributing good to others. And we see Abraham was blessed, he flourished. He flourished. Isaac. God says to stay in Gera. And the Bible says it was a dry ground. It was a farming time. Everything was dry. It was a farmer, but we couldn't plant anything. Everything was just dry. Nothing. And God stayed there. I'm going to bless you. And he obeyed. And for a short while, it was lying. He told the king that the wife was the sister. And for as long as he was lying, not living in righteousness, he could not move to the next stage of his life. His life stagnated. His life became static. He couldn't go forward. 
He couldn't enter into the God's provision for himself. He couldn't enjoy open heaven. So until God have had mercy on him, he wasn't the one that confessed. He wasn't the one that stopped there. Because God will have mercy on him, his, his faults, his lying was discovered. Because God wanted to help him. Many a time when God exposed our, weak, our unrighteousness, and, and it's for God he wants to help us. Because as long as it remains secret, you keep on doing it, and you keep on being away from God and away from God's provision for your, for your life. But I believe tonight also God would do something in your life in Jesus' name. And so, our father, as they began to, began to flourish, and you can name it, you can name it. Before, before J Jacob will flourish, you remember God himself, he had, had to meet him on the way. It's not a problem, it's not anything that makes him prosper. You know, when he gets to Laban's house, you know how God makes him to flourish. That even Laban said, I know I was being blessed because of you. And you can go on and on. So we are looking at the word flourish. It's one advantage of you when you are living a righteous life. And righteous living is not just God's doing. You have to take a part. You have to be determined. You have to, to make up your mind. That's the level you want to live. It's not just God that has to do it. It's not just grace that will work. You yourself need to cooperate with grace. You yourself need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We must desire it. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who are thirsty and hunger after righteousness because God will satisfy them. Is that your desire? Is that your hunger? So let's go forward. To, to flourish is to grow. To flourish is to thrive. As I declare this evening by the grace of God, if you have been stagnated, you have not been growing either in your spiritual life or in your physical life or your, in any area of your life, positively, grace will come on you to begin to grow in Jesus' name. Whatever is limiting your growth will, be, will, be, will come under judgment under the hammer of the word of God in Jesus' name. To flourish is to grow. To flourish is to thrive. To flourish is to prosper. Is to prosper. To flourish is to do well. Is to do well. So if you are righteous, there is no way the Bible says the righteous shall flourish. You will do well. If you are righteous, you will thrive. No matter where you are planted. I mean, look at our father Abraham. Look at our father Isaac. At a time, our father Isaac ran to Egypt because I was farming where he was. Because he come back, he regretted. He almost lost his wife, lost everything. God had mercy on him. All right? So it is not prophetic but that comes because you are lying. It is not anything that comes because out of, out of, out of, out of, uh, out of lying or compromise. That's what I was looking for. Anything that comes out of compromise, it's not of God. Anything that comes out of cutting corners, it's not of God. It's not a blessing from God. It's not flourishing from God and it doesn't last. It doesn't have the blessing of God. So to flourish is to, is to thrive, is to prosper. If you want to prosper, I know we talk about prosperity today. As a Christian, you will measure the justice of our, our Christianity as in financial terms are very, very prosperous. And we all chase money, chase this and chase that. But the best way to chase re money, to be wealthy, is to be able to chase righteousness. Because the Bible says, Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that the, the old world, the Gentiles, the unbelievers, they die for, they struggle for, shall be added to you. Only seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, its way of living, the culture of the kingdom of God. Seek it. We're going to be talking about the culture of the kingdom of God at some other time. Seek it here on earth. This culture of the kingdom of God, live it here on earth. Be it, let it be your own culture here on earth. And the Bible says all the things that the Gentiles seek for, people clamor for, struggle for, shall be added to you. God will add them to you. Amen. So, again, to flourish is to increase. To flourish is to multiply. To flourish is to spring up. To flourish is to shoot up from nothing. To flourish is to bloom. 
to flourish is to blossom. And I see you in the name of Jesus. That is why you need to think about your lifestyle. You either want to live on your own or by your own self or you want to live by God. You want to live by God, then pursue righteousness. You want to have a blessing that comes from the Lord, pursue righteousness. And you see God, because once you're on the right standing with God, you have a right standing with God, you have a right standing with God, which means you have a relationship with God that God is pleased with. He endow you with himself and everything he has. And that is the sure way to prosper. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord make rich. They have no sorrow to it. So to, to, to flourish is to increase, is to multiply, is to, is to spring up, is to shoot up, is to bloom, is to blossom, 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 is to be a fruit, to, to, blow, to, 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 to flourish, is to burst forth, burst forth. <laughs> to, to flourish is to run riot. Things just, wow. Praise God. Amen. Now there are three areas we want to look at tonight. Area of flourishing. Because man is a spirit. He has a soul. And he lives in the body. For, for you to flourish, you are three in this world. You are three components. Yourself being the spirit. Having a soul and living in the body. These three, when the Bible is talking about flourishing, these three components of that constitute who you are must flourish. In other words, you must grow physically, grow spiritually, grow psychologically or emotionally in your soul. You must prosper, not only physically, prosper. Emotionally, or in your, in your soul realm, which your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body, you know, you, you, now, right? And when you must prosper, your soul must prosper. Your body must prosper. Your spirit must prosper. So that's why I'm talking about flourishing. That is what it means. Now, means you do well physically, not neglecting spirit, not doing well, but not doing well physically, not you're doing well spiritually, it's not flourishing. That's not the time of flourishing God is talking about. Flourishing spiritually and physically, you are not flourishing. Or in the realm of the soul, you are not flourishing. That is not. The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health as your soul prosper. So God is interested in a whole man. The Bible says that our body, soul, and spirit is talking about it in the book of, in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 5. Amen. Praise God. So God is interested in your soul, your spirit, and your body. So when you talk about flourishing, it means the three aspects of your life. Praise God. It means that your spirit will blossom, your body will blossom, your soul will blossom. All right. Hallelujah. I think that, is, that point is well made. So what does it mean to, be, to physically blossom? To flourish physically? It means to enjoy good health. It's mean to, the Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest proper, prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Let's turn to it. The book of 3 John, the book of 3 John, I hope I'm carrying you along tonight. 3 John, the only chapter there, verse 2, beloved. This is the Holy Spirit inspiring John to speak. So you can see this is God speaking to you. I, beloved, I wish above all things. There are so many wishes of God. But his wish for you is above every other his wishes. I wish above all things that you may prosper. I mean flourish. And be in health. Be in health. Not being sick and looking for healing. He wants you to be in health even as your soul prospers. You can see the elements now. You can see the body 
And you can see this prosperity of your body being tied to the prosperity of your soul. This prosperity of your spirit is most important because first and foremost, you are the spirit. And it is with your spirit you connect with God. And when your spirit is dead, that means there is no relationship with God. If God is going to bless pipe any, any flow of his grace to your life, it is through his spirit to your spirit man. Whatever God wants to give you, he will give you. Is God is spirit. He will connect you to his, your own spirit. And if your spirit is dead, there is no connection. That's why Adam lost, he, 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 he disobeyed God. God took his spirit from him. He became dead. And you know, it affected him physically. It affected him emotionally. His life destiny became changed. Oh, because he lost it in the realm of the spirit. You will, tonight, if you are to prioritize on anything about yourself, man is spirit. You are first and foremost spirit. Pay attention to your spirit. As long as your spirit is well, your soul will be well, and when your soul is well, your body will be well. That's the way it goes. May the Lord give us understanding. In number of us, we, are, we pay more emphasis on physical, not the soul, the spirit at least, we reverse it. I was also telling you from the book of First Thessalonians, let's look at it again together. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, verse 23, and the very God of peace, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Totally. And pray God your whole spirit and soul and body preserved blameless. So it's can see the holistic approach of God to, when you talk about flourishing. I, I feel like begging you, ladies and gentlemen, that's why you need to pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to your spirit. Don't ignore your spirit well-being and focus on your physical well-being. You are putting the cart before the horse. It's a little wonder. The Israelites were crying to God in the wilderness. They were asking for manna. And the Bible says, He fell them with manna, but there was leanness in their soul. There's poverty in their soul. Poverty in their spirit. That's why to even believe God for, for a future God has for them, they couldn't. Because it's all about give us today. Give us. He gave us manner that it was, the store was coming out of their nose. And yet there was poverty in the spirit. Their spirit, they, they, they didn't understand the way of God. They didn't understand the way of God. They didn't understand the way of God. The Bible says his people knew his act, not his ways. When you grow up in the spirit, you know the way of God. You are able to connect with God. You know the way of God. You have to, because you have the right standing with God. Again, he says, and the very God of peace sanctify you only, totally, and pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, your soul is blameless, your body is blameless, your spirit is blameless. Spirit is blameless, soul is blameless, your body is blameless. And also be preserved. So God is interested 
in the all of you, of your being. So what is physical well-being? Good health, we said. Good health. To be in health. That is one of the benefits of being a righteous person. You will live in good health. God will preserve your health. Amen. It will give you good health. Hallelujah. The Bible talked about Moses in the book of uh, Numbers. Deuteronomy, sorry. Deuteronomy, the last chapter there. Let's open to it. The Bible says, Aid our uh, father Abraham, I mean, I was, uh, uh, Moses, he grew. Let's look at it together so that we can, we can, we can. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural force abandoned. Na, no, his natural force abated. One twenty years old. His eyes did not grow dim or his natural force abated. You know, the, the, the end of God before, before man's sin was man to live forevermore. To live forevermore. And if you look at the book of when sin began to, began to come, God began to cut the lifespan of people. The lifespan of people began to be cut because of sin. Praise God. All right? The lifespan of people began to cut, God began to cut it. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So you can see cut. And you look at look at Psalm 90. Praise God. Let's look at some. See how God what was meant to be eternal life. The more the sin, the more our life is cut short, the more the quality of our life, even physical life, is affected. Sin is a destroyer. Flourishing means long life. It means good health. Long life. Good health. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then in Psalm 90, you can see it. The Bible talks about, about 90 years. We're talking about 70 years. 70 years. We start to look at the scripture. 70 years. So you can see that, they, that I'm, 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 if you look at it across the world now, that life expectancy is becoming lower and lower. Especially now, thank God for the modern, modern you know, health here and there here that, we are, that we used to do all this. But look at all over the world. When sin came, life expectancy cut. Good health. It also means fruitfulness, physical fruitfulness. Physical fruitfulness. Flourishing means physical fit, uh, fruitfulness. I pray today, because we are talking about the fact that the righteous shall flourish, and the flourishing means good health, I decree good health to you in Jesus' name. If for any reason you are suffering from sickness or diseases, this is not the, your portion as a righteous man. It is not your covenant. It is not in the covenant that God made with us. The covenant God made with us is a covenant of health, good health, to live in health. So therefore, I stand in the name of Jesus. As you make up your mind to, to cherish righteousness in your home, at work, everywhere, I decree that in Jesus' name, that covenant be activated for you now in Jesus' name. And every sickness that has found itself in your body, I command it out in Jesus' name. I decree the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And therefore, whatever is not of God in your body, the Bible says that every plant my father has not been has not planted and devoured, it shall be rooted out. I command to be rooted out 
anything that is alien to your body, that is a parasite to your body, that is not what going on, that is a product not of God but of the devil. I command it out in Jesus' name. I also pray the Bible says, with long life, will I satisfy you? So if there's anyone tonight that the devil has intervened because of unrighteousness, he has had that as a, as, as, as he has programmed a short life for you. Today I stand on God's altar that with long life, I connect you back to the covenant of long life in the name of Jesus. But I want you to make up your mind. Righteousness make you flourish. A part of flourishing is long life. I decree to your life in Jesus' name. I don't know whatever is, I've been running your families. I've been dying your God, not that the covenant of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, supervenes, overwhelms, is above. No matter who wishes you dead, God wishes you long life. And the wish of the Father will come to pass. For the Bible says, we see that speaks and come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. What God has commanded concerning you is that be righteous and you will have a long life. You receive it tonight in Jesus' name. So when we are talking about flourishing physically, we are talking about God saying to you that you will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. When you are, the Bible says the righteous shall flourish, means the righteous shall be fruitful. Physically. Physically. Many a time we talk about fruit of the womb, which means child bearing. It's also true. This microphone I'm holding is a brain child of somebody or some people. It's a brain child. It's a brain child of somebody. It's part of fruitfulness of somebody. It first comes as a mentor, something that, as an idea. It's a fruit of the brain. Amen. The pulpit I'm standing here now. I know we can buy it on the market. It's first and foremost the fruit, the, the, the fruit child, brain child of somebody. Amen. Praise God. The, 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 the device you are using to watch me tonight is a brain child. It's part of fruitfulness of somebody. I decree today your, God, your body is meant to produce you. I mean your brain, your hands, your feet. All part of your body are meant to be fruitful. I look at some people. When God created them, they are fit. Some of us, we only use our feet to walk, to walk, to run, to go to work. But some people use their feet and they are handing big millions every, every year. Their feet is fruitful. Amen. I decree to you whatever God has ordained for you. The Bible says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Every part of the palm tree is flourishing. It's, 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 it's virtue. It's valuable. It's valuable. As you hear the word of God that is an inspiration, a flow of the power of God, of the life of God into you now, that quickens you. The Bible says, if the spirit that rages from Raise Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. He that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mother body. Whatever has gone dead, that has become dry, that is not producing, receive the quickening power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, tonight. Thank you, King of Kings, tonight. How would I ask you have lost? I mean, like I said to you, some people. His foot is their legs, and he's bringing them so much money. That is physical fruitfulness. Some people, it's their hands. Their hands. Good with their hands. And they're bringing in their sustainability and they're blessing the whole world through the instrument of their hands. Skillful in their hands. Either they can draw, they can make a tune. Or they can write. Journalists. Praise God. Journalists. Praise God. You know, they use the power of the pen. Their hands can write. So you can draw. They do cartoon. So you can, they, they, they can, they're artists. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you can, so we're talking about physical fruitfulness. 
the beauty of this message tonight is this. I see God breathing on you. I decree God is breathing on you. I decree God is restoring you back to the original state as long as you decide to be righteous. You see what we are missing when you are living an incorrect life? You see what we are missing when you are living a life of compromise? You are missing how on divine agenda of God for you to blossom. Time will not tell me to, to, to me, time will not allow me to talk about even your mouth. So first all that we do with our mouth is to, is to eat with our mouth. We eat and talk. When some people through this mouth, that is what is, they are blessing the whole world. They are blessing the whole world. They are fulfilling purpose just using their own tongues, their own mouth. So we can go on and on and on and on about the fruit of the body. The fruit of the womb is just one of. I'm talking about mental fruitfulness. Ideas. Ideas. Everything that we see physical to the first I see as an idea in somebody's brain. How can we go from here to here? In the, in the Stone Age, people have to use us and go from one place to another by riding horse. And that's why today they still measure the power of cars by horse power. Horse power. Measuring it by the strength of the horse. And then somebody says, can we, can we, can we? And if you go and read the story of an automobile and things like that, even the plane, is because you know, ideas. Can we not do this? Let's move on because of our time. What of psychological or emotional well-being? I want to take, take, take your pen and write this one down. We talk about the physical well-being flourishing physically. We're also talking about psychological or emotional well-being. In his well-documented work, Carol Reeves gave us six factors of psychological well-being model, which is not based on just feeling happy. Hallelujah. The goal of psychological well-being is not just being happy. It is instead about living virtuously. Virtuously. So what are these six factors according to Carol Reeves? Key elements of psychological well-being. Put them down. Praise God. I've been able to, I've been able to explain to you physical well-being. We're looking at psychological well-being. The righteous shall flourish. Soul, spirit, and body. Number one is self-acceptance. Self-acceptance. When you are flourishing in, in your mind, you accept who God has made you. You accept yourself. You don't hate yourself. Now people, they compare themselves to themselves and they become the, depressed. They look, they don't, they, they have, they don't have self-image. They have no, they don't have identity. They don't have lost their own identity. Self-acceptance. Accept who you are. These are the factors. Number, the second factor is personal growth. Personal growth. These are psychological key elements of psychological well-being. Personal growth. Number three, purpose in life. They don't just make you happy. They make your life virtuous. When you, are, you, are, you, are, you accept yourself, when you undergo personal growth, your purpose in life, number four, you, environmental mastery. You're able to master your environment. Number five, autonomy. You're able to function autonomic, uh, you know, in autonomy. You are not dependent on so many. I'm not talking about not networking. I'm not talking about uh, living in isolation. But I'm talking about being able to, to function. 
You are not depending on people to do ev anything, everything. You have to do, depend on this, on that, on that. You can go on, you can build your life. And lastly, positive relation, relations with others. Positive, I mentioned them again. The, the Carol Leaf's six factor of psychological well being, which means flourishing in your, in, in, psychologically, is number one, self acceptance. Number two, personal growth. Number three, purpose in life. Number four, environmental mastery. Number five, autonomy. And number six, positive relations with others. Lastly, what is spiritual flourishing? Or spiritual well-being? Praise God. How do you say somebody is, is, is spiritually flourishing? Right, let me. I will just look at it. Some scripture to us, and then we can we can be able to deduce ourselves. For instance, in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verse thirteen, Ephesians chapter six, verse thirteen, in NLT, it says, "Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. After the battle." One of the evidences of spiritual well-being, spiritual flourishing, is that you have gone through some challenges in your life. The enemy has come after you. Situation has been so rough. Yeah, you, 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 you confront it, and after you have won, you are still standing firm. You don't, you are not, because of what you have gone through, say there's no more God. Because because we have gone through this, you disown you 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 you, you, you disown God. You say God, I mean you deny God. You don't become withdrawn. I don't want to serve God again. God hates me. God doesn't know me. Abandons me. You know when somebody so when you have gone through challenges and you are still standing, you know you remember you can talk about Job and say Job is flourishing. Because challenges of life didn't make him deny God. And you see how God prospered. Challenges of life didn't make him compromise. He didn't go down on his commitment to God. What does it mean to flourish spiritually? It also means to be fruitful. To be able to be fruitful as a, as a Christian spiritually. Look at a man like Peter. A man who, who before was running around what, fishing and it wasn't prosperous. You know, you remember the story so well. So discovered when Christ left. But when the Holy Spirit came on him, in chapter 3, he saw a crippled man and went to the crippled man and said, and the crippled man, crippled man looked at him that they would give him money. You know, he was begging for harms. And Peter said, silver, I have, don't, we don't have. Gold, we don't have. But such as we have, we give unto you. Rise up and walk. And when he will not rise to walk, he pull, grab him by the hand and raise him up. That spiritual flourish, he was able to, he was able to be fruitful. And you know, he was able to manifest the, the, the power of the Holy Ghost. He was able to be relevant by this the Christianity he possesses, he professes. He was able to make it to make an impact in somebody around him. To the point that one person became a whole and 5,000 who saw it became born again. That is a sign or mark of spiritual fruitfulness. Spiritual fruitfulness because he was being spiritually fruitful. Who called of Philip? Philip, out of it was by it was because they had persecution. They drove them all the, into places. It was a deacon in his church to be serving tables, and he because thank God he grew up, ladies and gentlemen. When we go we, later, we are going to be going to as God will allow us in this series. Now this Peter and this Philip, it's not a matter of title. He got to Samaria. And this Samaria was a city where there was one man called Simon the Sorcerer. Simon the Sorcerer was the principality of Samaria. 
He held that city in, in, in affliction. There was sorrow in that city. That nothing good was happening in that city. It was a city under a siege, demonic siege, under the rule of Simon the Sostra. One Christian entered there. He entered there, unsung, unknown, and preaching the gospel. And as he was preaching, signs, miracles were happening, wonders were happening, to the point that the whole city became liberated. One man, spiritual fruitfulness. That is what God makes of people who are righteous. People that make righteousness their goal. People that make righteousness their desire. People that make, make effort to say, God, I'm going to cooperate with you. I know it's very tempting to sin. But I'm going to preserve myself for God. I want God to use me. God says, they shall, prosper, they shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. He said, you will flourish. Why don't you try God? And let and, and give God to the totality of yourself. And see whether God will not take hold of you. And make your spirit so flourishing. Time will not allow me to talk about Paul. You know Paul. Everywhere he went. Everywhere he went. He was a, 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 a trailblazer. Was creating waves. Hallelujah. And today we are still enjoying the fruitfulness of Paul, the apostle. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ. Act 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. That is what it means to be spiritually fruitful, blossoming. Everywhere he goes, he was doing good. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. God will not be with a man who is not righteous. God will not be with a man. One great benefit of you being righteous is that you have God with you. You carry God with you. Anywhere you are going, you are a carrier of the presence of God. You are a carrier of the presence of God. Anywhere. You may not see him, but that's the reality. What does it mean to be spiritually fruit to be to be to be to to to, 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 be, to flourish spiritually? Is to be able to manifest not only the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. And what the fruit of the flesh is. When you are spiritually blossoming, when you are flourishing spiritually, you don't not only exhibit the power of God, your fruit, your character, you stand out as light, you stand out as salt, you contrast the atmosphere where you are, you become a role model. That's what the Bible says. Lord, when you when you in your home, on the street, wherever you are. What does it mean? It also means to be on fire for God. To be on fire for God. I want to ask you, what is your temperature like in your, speech, your spiritual life? What is it like? What is it like? To be on fire for God. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 15 to 16, we are talking about the righteous shall flourish. He said, I know thy works. I pray. The key to flourishing without compromise is to be righteous. Pursue righteousness. Pursue God's kingdom and righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I know thy works. Revelation 3, 15 to 16. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Is that you? Is that me? Neither cold nor hot. You come to church, yeah? You have a place you normally sit down. Is it what what is? Thank God you attend house fellowship. But you yourself, can you do you do you think are you hot or cold? Oh, look warm. 
This is a time for you to think again about where your priorities lie. He says, I know thy works. I know thy works. How do you show your fervency in God? How do you show that you are fervent in God? You are strong in the spirit. You are blossoming in the spirit. Is it just by sitting in the pew? By not bothering whether souls are going to hell or not? People are doing things in the church. You are being, whatever church you are, you have been there, you just think in and out. Nobody can rely on you. Nobody can depend on you. You do what you, you want to do, not to what needs to be done. Has come for us to tell ourselves the truth. Righteousness is the foundation of Christian living. When you, when that foundation is right, everything that God has in store for you becomes your portion. You can't talk about faith in unrighteousness. You can't talk, talk about fasting in unrighteousness. You can't talk about giving gift to God in unrighteousness. You cannot talk about tight pain in unrighteousness. We need to go to the foundation which will make your, life, your body, your life must first be acceptable to God. That's why we pay tithes. We do all kinds of things that we do, but we don't see the result because our life is not in line with, alignment with God. He says, so them, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spoil you out of my mouth. That shall not be your portion. I don't know whether God is sending this, this word to you, oh ye man, Oh, you woman, that what man, mango eats is all that is driving you. The, the physical needs of is what is driving you. When the, we are at, and you totally ignore your spirit. You are not serving God. You are not being there for God. You are not connected with God. Don't let God spoil you out. Don't let God replace you. Don't let God look for eternity for you. Authentic to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Romans 12, 11, not slothful in business. What it means to be, to, be, to be flourishing spiritually. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. I feel like if I can hear your voice, I would have said, repeat after me. But even if I cannot hear your voice, can you say it after me? To spiritually flourish mean fervent in spirit. Sorry, it means not slothful in business. Kingdom business. Kingdom business. Not slothful in it. When the pastor asked me, that when I beg you and beg you, come and serve God, I just love instead of me. I will, till I die, I will serve God. My life, the foremost thing in my life is to serve God. And I will serve him till I breathe my last breath. I will encourage you. If you are me, I will encourage you. I will talk to you. I will show by example that the Bible says, if you obey and serve me, you would live your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. If you obey and serve me, you will live your days in prosperity and your years in, in pleasure. If a man serves me, the Bible says in John 12, 24, if a man serves me, my father will honor. What are you doing to advance God's kingdom? What are you doing? Somebody's talked to you anyhow. He said, anyway, I don't want to serve God again. I said, I'm telling you, I'm asking myself. It's because we have not, we have not, the things of the kingdom has not been a priority to you. And you want God to be concerned about your issue. And you pray, 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 and fast, and fast when you ignore what concerns God. And God says, I need you, my son. I need you, my brother. Go and do. I need you. I need you. And you say, God, I need you too. And God says, I will be available for you, but I need you. Make this available for me. Not slothful in business. Father in spirit, serving the Lord. May God enter you tonight. May God bring conviction to your spirit tonight. May God win you over to himself tonight. Because that's where your future lies. The Bible says you don't muscle the mouth of the horse that treads the corn. You don't muscle the mouth of the horse that treads the corn. Laborers deserve reward. You cannot serve God and God will ignore you. 
I told you about my own life story. When God asked me to come and be a pastor, I was so busy. At that time, I was even, you know, I, I was a chief resident in surgery, you know, and I was so busy. And as God said, I want to look for a reason to keep you alive. I want to look for a reason to keep you alive. It is not my medicine that is keeping me alive. There are so many doctors, better doctors. God will not keep me alive just because I'm a doctor. God will keep me alive because I'm fulfilling his purpose. He could rely on me. And many times I challenge him. I challenge him. I say, God, this little light of mine, I will let it shine. This little light of mine, I will let it shine. This little light of mine, I will let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Ah, if you can give me bigger light, I will make it shine. I will. Go. That's my primary goal. And God knows what I'm saying. And I'm not doing God a favor. It's only the living that can serve God. The dead cannot serve God. So he's given me, kept me alive. Therefore, uh, the reason why God kept me alive, I must, I, must, I must justify it by spending every part of my life. Nothing matters to me than serving God. Hallelujah. Also, I, I said to you, being strong in the spirit and fruitful, being, being flourishing in the spirit means doing exploit for God. Daniel 11 and 2 says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. In the, in the original Greek word, where that was translated, if you look at the, 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 you know, I'm carrying an iPad now. If you look at your Bible, the exploit is written, uh, you know, in, in italics. In italics. Because in the original, the way it is like, the, it is, but the people that do, their, do know their God shall be strong and do, and do, and perform. Anywhere they turn to, they will, they will break forth. They will make this happen. Things will happen through them. They will do. But it doesn't, it doesn't seem to make sense. So they put express there. That's why it is in italics. If you look at King James Version. The word express there is written in italics. Which means it was just added to make it make sense. It's an open and end thing. When you are righteous, you carry God into business. You carry God into, is with you in, in academics. It's with you everywhere. And it's not you that will be seen. It is it's evidence in you that will be manifest. Exploits. Lastly, before we pray. Flourishing in this world. The poor benefit of, flourishing, of righteousness not just in this world. In Revelation 22, and I'm going to hand on, on this and we'll pray. Revelation 22, 11 to 15 says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Let him continue if he doesn't want to change. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Continue in your filthiness. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. And if that is holy, let him be holy still. Come to be holy. Don't, don't judge yourself by any other person. And behold, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ says. In the book of Revelation 22, 11 to 15. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and omega the beginning and the ending and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life that they may have right to the tree of life 
being righteous give you access to the tree of life. And the Bible says, I may enter in through the gate into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and warmongers and murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Shall we pray together? Hallelujah. Blessed are they. That do his commandments, that they may have rights to the tree of life. Let's pray together.